So it's 1am but I can't sleep because I'm so hungry. So uh, I'm going to go downstairs and get some food. Your body isn't a clock and if it's hungry then you should honour your hunger whatever time of day it is. So I'm going to go get some food. If you've watched any of my TikToks, which I'll link down below, you guys will know that I love a voiceover. And now I've got the length of the entire YouTube video to do some motivational waffling. Also, we've got a big spoon because we are not letting any anorexic food rolls in here. This stuff is so good. I'm gonna eat this and watch some Outnumbered because Outnumbered is just the best show ever. Um, I feel like there's this notion that if you're eating at night or if you're eating when no one's around that you're binging because diet culture says so, but diet culture is bullshit, okay? And if you feel hungry, whether it's mentally or physically, you should honor it. So don't feel guilty about coming downstairs at night and eating or eating when there's no one around or eating unhealthy foods. Your eating sort will try and convince you that you're out of control and that you're binging anyway. And so when diet culture reinforces that, it's just unhelpful. If you're new here, hi, thank you so much for watching. My name's Millie and I'm in recovery from anorexia. I'm in all in recovery. All in recovery looks different for everyone and it isn't the only type of anorexia recovery. For me, it means honoring all of my mental and physical hunger on top of the meal plan that I'm prescribed for CAMS. I still can't sleep and I've been sucked into watching way too many productive 5am morning routines on YouTube. My perfectionist brain is up. Yeah, not being kind to me right now. It's making me feel like anything that I upload on YouTube is just going to be rubbish. And like, I get that this isn't all kind of avocado toast, yoga, hydration. I need to get over that and you guys are so amazing and I'd much rather that a hundred of you amazing people watch this and see the real me and enjoy it than a million people watch this and I'm putting out a fake version of myself. I'd much rather people like me feel I actually am. I only took half my dose of um my sleep medication today so that's probably why I can't sleep. I'd highly recommend listening to an audiobook when you're trying to sleep because if you're anything like me, you need noise to block out the voices in your head. And that sounds strange. Please tell me you understand and I'm not just being weird. Good yeah, morning. So, uh, I'm a cheeky bit tired now, but it's fine. Yeah, whenever I come down, like, in the night to get food, I always, like, try and make sure that it's positive. That's that really sense. good, yeah. And I think it is, like I didn't yeah. just come down. You're not just standing at the larder stuffing your face with sprinkles and... No, I'm not, I came like down, come down, got two eat bix half banana, That's really peanut good. butter. Yeah. Sat and watched Mountain Bird and then went back to bed. That, that meal, that is really sensible, actually. Not just to lay there and stress about it and fret about it, just to get up, do something about it. Get yourself something healthy and something to eat. Is wearing those like suits so they sweat more and burn more calories. That's like me, mum, but like all the time. Since starting recovery, I've been so hot all the time. When I was engaged in my eating disorder, I was freezing even on the hottest days, and that is a massive change I've noticed. I just wanted to say everyone's recovery journey looks different and we're at different stages in our journey so please don't compare yourself to me or feel any pressure to go all in. It's taken me months of recovery to get to the stage where I'm mentally strong enough to do this. Breakfast part three. Go away! I am currently experiencing extreme hunger so I'm eating a lot of food. If you haven't experienced extreme hunger it doesn't make you or your eating disorder any less valid. I'm a walk with my friend and it's time for snack number one. It's only. But I love that granola. Hey, you, know, you, know in, in, um, you know in old you know, 18th Jenna. century houses when mm. tea was a thing, there was a tea caddy and it was, a, it was locked. locked, locked it. A lockable That's tea. Yeah. yeah. To you, need a lock, you need a lockable a lock. granola caddy. Granola caddy. That won't even last two days, Mum. Twat. 
pillock, little shit. One, two, three. Yeah, not bad actually, not bad. Long idea. Oh, gorgeous little butt crack. There's coffee, I don't know what the snack situation is. It's okay, my baby. Honey. There is a big difference between extreme hunger and binging. Extreme hunger is your body's biological response to a period of restriction. And because it has been deprived of food for so long, it's only natural that it's going to try and make up the calorie deficit that it's had. Your eating disorder will probably try and convince you that you're out of control or that you're binging, but you're not, and it's important that you honour your hunger. Chances are you'll also be eating more food than those around you. I know I eat probably double the amount of my mum, for example. But what you have to remember is your family members haven't been through the same period of restriction that you've been through. Your body has been deprived of food for a long time, so it's only natural that it's going to be hungry. Oh my god, mum, I'm so hot. Pardon me. Sorry about that, you didn't need to hear that. I'm so gross. <clears throat> Maybe I should just crop this out, no one wants to hear me burp. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, just edit all this out, Mel. Lunch time. Frank, you're so cute. I hope someday you'll join us. <sighs> and the world. Since choosing recovery, I've had so much more energy. I've started loving life again and all the little things like prancing around my kitchen and singing awfully at the top of my voice. Feels like we're finally getting the real Millie back, even though she can be extremely right. annoying. Oh, my hair. I eat on the sofa a lot because I find that watching TV can be a really good distraction from the eating disorder voice, which is particularly loud at meal times. The first few months of my recovery, my parents were completely in control of my food because I wasn't mentally in the place where I could feed myself. They managed to weight restore me originally, but then after giving me control back, I ended up spiraling downwards again into a relapse. I know you're probably desperate to get back in control of your food, but is it you that wants to be in control or is it the eating disorder? Don't rush into it because otherwise you'll just end up having to have your parents in control again. I am weight restored again, which basically means I'm a healthy BMI. I'm not physically or mentally recovered and I'm going to continue gaining weight so I get my period back. If you didn't lose your period, it doesn't make you or your eating disorder any less valid. I personally believe that BMI is bullshit, but it's what CAMS use. Snack number three, and I am super hungry for this one. <laughs> I'm on a maintenance meal plan now for CAMS, but that's like the bare minimum, and I never only eat that much food. As you can tell, I'm still eating a lot. My parents have finally started to give me back a little bit of control, but only in places. They still keep a close eye on my food, and remember, I'm only allowed to be in control again because my parents know that I really genuinely want to recover, and that's what's had to change. I finally got to the place where this is what I want, and I'm working with my parents rather than against them, and until you get to that point, it's probably not the best idea for you to be back in control of your eating because it won't be making positive decisions. The first few months of my recovery felt kind of forced. I didn't want to get better. I didn't actually believe that I was ill even, but after about four months of being forced into recovery and after going into a relapse, I realised that I didn't want this to be my life and that I wanted to get better. And that was the turning point for me. And that was when my parents finally allowed me a bit more control because they knew that I was going to eat because I was eating for me rather than just for them. Weetabix take two because I am still super hungry. I genuinely am loving recovery, I'm not pretending. Um, it is still difficult though, and I'm not perfect. I still struggle, I still have the feelings of guilt, and I still have bad days. But all in all, I look back on the decision to recover as the best thing I ever decided to do, and I am so proud of myself for choosing it. Meeting in my room again, so I'm gonna watch some YouTube to distract myself. One of my weird food rules was that I wasn't allowed like more than one of a certain food in a day, if that makes sense. Like, I'd only be allowed one bagel or one banana. I feel like 
that's kind of enforced just in general not just with eating disorders so don't let anyone tell you that you can only have two Weetabix in a day just listen to your body your body craves certain foods for a reason so you should just give it that food rather than eating something else because that is still a form of restriction which is also why I've got a big spoon which I'm still not used to I don't think I'll ever get used to it I miss my little spoon but it is what it is Bye Emma, you can leave now. Mm. It is like that. That's precisely how they make it. It is. Is it? <laughs> Time for pudding. Yes, in England we call all dessert pudding, don't hate on me. Nana pancake, turn like it's the weekend now. Making banana pancakes. We're a bit randomly sized, but uh, oh well. Recovery is so worth it because eventually you'll be able to eat foods just because you really enjoy them. The decisions around food won't be made by your parents or your CAMS team or your eating disorder. They'll be made by you. No one told me that I had to have banana pancakes for pudding and obviously this is not what my eating disorder wanted. But it's what I wanted and I thoroughly enjoyed them. It looks so good. This is what I'd have for breakfast on like the weekend. So it's, it's a full on meal but we need to honour that hunger. Now in the evenings I'm able to sit in my room and watch YouTube rather than feeling like I have to exercise or that I have to count exactly what I've eaten that day. This is so good and I find that it's really difficult within my eating disorder to enjoy foods because it feels wrong but it's okay to enjoy foods especially in recovery you've been deprived of the foods that you enjoy for so long. Try and like get back to those childhood favourites all those pre eating foods that you used to enjoy because that's really the only way that you're going to fix your relationship with food is by like allowing yourself to enjoy it. Mm. Food is there to be enjoyed. So good. My god, my hands are shaking. I didn't even think of, I was that nervous, but <laughs> I think I must be. I am enjoying it though, and I'm not afraid to say that I'm enjoying it. I'm working on like trying to take bigger mouthfuls as well, because I'm really bad when it comes to eating really slowly on taking really small bites so I'm um, trying to combat that because obviously that is like an eating disorder rule and we don't want to keep any of them we want to get rid of all of the like yeah I don't want to hold on to any even the tiniest bits of my eating disorder I want it all gone forever completely bye bye so yeah that means big mouthfuls I think I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other video ideas, please comment them because I wanna be making what you actually want to watch. I hope you have an amazing day and I am so proud of you. You're awesome. Send you so much love. Bye.